How to charm a guy. Because guess what? Your looks are only going to get you so far. Most people think that their appearance is the best way to attract a guy. And most, like honestly, I find a lot of people, at least some of the people who come to me for the first time before they actually speak to me, think that most guys are only into one thing. And guess what? I know a lot of girls who are only into one thing as well. So we want to learn more about actually how to charm a guy a bit more. And guys, if you're watching this, the same thing is going to apply because guess what? This is about, you know, what, what's the word? Uh, humans. You know, this is about humans interacting with other humans. And the three things that I'm going to give you today aren't the only three things. Trust me, there is a hell of a lot more. But these are some of the three biggest things that I've personally found that make you so much more charming in both a romantic sense, a sexual sense, an intimate sense, but also even friends. So these are the things that you can also apply to maybe networking that make you ultimately a little bit more charming and charismatic and just an all-round cool person to be around. So, you know, that's, that's basically the basis of it, is people like people who make them feel good, you know, and make them feel good about themselves now, in the future, or even the past. So that's the foundation here, is that we're basically making people feel good. And guess what? If someone's attracted to you and you make them feel good, oh my God, they are going to love you even more. So let's get into it. The first thing is callbacks. The first thing is what we call callbacks. So this can be callback humor or callback conversations. People basically like someone who can remember details about them, whether or not that's a conversation you had in the past, whether or not that's a joke you had in the past, whether or not it was in the same conversation. But your ability to make callbacks, so callback humor, jokes, maybe you do this already, maybe you don't. Just being aware of it makes it really cool. But these callback humor is actually really interesting. So maybe what you can do just to practice as an experiment, right, is to make a joke or you make a joke, but bring it up later on in the conversation. You'll find, or maybe you have found, that when you do that, it makes people laugh even more because not only you're making the joke, so you've made a new joke, but you're bringing back the humor of the old joke and it makes it even more funny. So another thing is, is to do with, say, general conversations, to use callback for general conversations. So someone's like, yeah, 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 you know, I went to the zoo last weekend. It's like, yeah, I remember because you said you love the zoo. You always go to the zoo like once a year or something like that. I say, like, yeah, thanks for remembering. These little things. These little details you can remember about someone actually make them feel like you care. And wait, isn't it weird if someone cares about you? You know, it's, it's kind of nice, isn't it? So it's this caring that we want to show people and you can show it to them by remembering details. You know, whether or not they know it or not, or they're consciously aware of it, they will feel nice because you actually remembered a detail about them. The second thing is, is not being afraid to use your emotions. What I find is, is most people, when they're attracted to someone, guess what they do? They treat them differently. And, and sometimes it might be nice because, you know, it, it makes them feel special that you are treating them differently. But the way that I find that people treat people differently is that they put them on a pedestal. And maybe you've heard this phrase before where they, they treat them like they're walking around on eggshells. You know, no, I don't do this, otherwise they won't like me. Oh, I will do this, otherwise they will. And guess what? Who else did you used to treat like that? Growing up, it was your parents. Because when you were growing up, if you did the right thing, your parents rewarded you. If you did the wrong thing, your parents punished you. Or maybe most parents, I'm not quite sure about yours, but some are worse. So when it comes to dating, we treat the person we like sometimes like they're our parents. That we don't want to upset them. We don't want to you know, rock the boat a bit too much because otherwise they won't give us love. But guess what? That's probably the reason why they're not giving you love. And so what I find is people go from their normal range of emotions, which is sometimes love and hate. You know, you love that movie, but you hate that song, which is cool because that's who you are. And they go from love and hates to what we call likes and dislikes. You know, I didn't like that movie or I, you know, I, I like that thing, which is really soft and it's not really who you are. You know, sometimes in some situations you might be soft, but in some situations you have an opinion. In some situations you are quiet and introverted, and in some situations you are extroverted, and in some situations you are courageous and bold, and in some situations you just want to stay at home, watch TV because you're really feeling sad. And that's human. 
And when you date someone, it's good to know that they're human. You know, one thing that I find people often say about me is the fact that I don't take things so seriously and that I'm pretty fucking relaxed. I'm really relaxed because I know that I'm not really in a rush to get anywhere. I know that I'm not really in a rush to get to know someone, that I know that I can't fully, truly ever fully get to know someone as much as they will probably get to know themselves. So I get to know them in whatever capacity comes up. And that's really charming for people is that they, they feel relaxed because I'm relaxed and they're relaxed. They can be relaxed about them. And it's quite nice. So the third thing is, the third thing is show interest in who they are as a human being. So you want to make someone feel like they're important. So if someone says they do this job, you might not say, oh, how long have you been doing that job for? You might actually say, oh, cool. So what do you like about doing that? You know, it's these probing emotional questions. So not facts, but feelings that allow someone to not only explore who they are, because people like that, but also you can validate that. If I would say, you know, you know, I like, uh, I like being a dating coach because I really get to meet a whole bunch of people. And if, if someone was to say to me, you know, that's really cool that you like to meet a bunch of people. I'd be like, yeah, that is cool. You know, it's like you validate them, you bring their self-esteem up and you can also bring your self-esteem up as well. Self-esteem is not a, like a defined resource. If someone has it, it does not mean that you don't have it. You know, I love the phrase, you're awesome, I'm awesome, let's be awesome together. Because that's a really good way to live life. You, you bring up the self-esteem of everyone in the room together and that's a beautiful thing. So make someone else feel like they're important. Bring their self-esteem up because pretty soon if you make them feel good around you, they will learn that hmm, maybe they feel good around you. Maybe that's a thing that they should do more, be around you. And so they like that. They like to be around you. So just remember this one little last thing is that we condition people to be in relationships with us. If you treat them badly every time they're around you, pretty soon they're not going to want to be around you. If you treat them well every time they're around you, pretty soon they're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time around you. And that's the foundation of relationships, that most relationships fall into this and we do not realize, and so we basically self-sabotage, jeopardize, and basically mistreat the people around us. If you wanna tell someone, someone bad, give them a hell of a lot more good because that way it'll grease the whole wheels and they won't feel bad about you or bad around you. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because if you don't, uh, I won't remember any details about you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, see you next time, bye.